What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I have a special guest here. His name is Joshua Yale, and he recently placed very well at the Expanded Regionals, uh, Collinsville Regionals, with kind of a rogue deck, and he's a bit newer to the competitive scene, doing very well for himself his first year going full competitive. So I wanted to have him on, pick his brain about this deck here, about his tournament run a little bit. And uh, we'll also be looking at the deck list. Before we get into that, shout out to PotownStore.com, my sponsor and the best place to get PTCGO codes. Of course, use code Celio over there for 5% off. And FlipsideGaming.com, where I write free articles. Hey, Joshua, how's it going, man? Good, good. Um, I'm a huge fan of you and your channel, so thank you so much for having me on it's surreal to, to have gotten the message of like hey i want you on the show i was like wait what me are you sure it's me so this is awesome 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 that's great to hear so um tell me a little bit about yourself about uh your pokemon career how long you've been into the game uh how you led up to collinsville regionals maybe um, I feel like my story is the same as a lot of people where like I was into Pokemon a lot when I was a kid. I collected the cards but never actually played the game. Um, and then I kind of moved on from Pokemon. When I was a teenager, I got into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But I kind of left that behind. I got into a competitive uh, versus system, for those who know what that is, like a superhero Marvel DC trading card game. Yeah. And then that went under. Um, but then I actually made friends with some people who only play like Magic the Gathering. Even if we like met up to 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 do something else they would all it was understood they would all bring their magic cards and would they eventually start playing magic and i was like mm -hmm. i just couldn't really get into magic on that level the same way they could and so me and a friend went to target and bought like pokemon starter decks mm -hmm. and the rest was history because i immediately <laughs> got like re-obsessed with pokemon i had not played a lot of the games but i went back and like replayed all of them and like reimmersed myself in the world and got in, into Pokemon. And this was like a couple years ago. And uh, um, I knew there was like a competitive scene. So I started going to tournaments like locals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I was, I was one of those people who's like, I just want to play for fun and use only my, my favorite Pokemon. So I'm only going to play this Gengar Mewtwo EX deck, you know, yeah, <laughs> things that just like aren't competitive. Um, and I was kind of like stuck in my ways for a while. Um, I did go to like a couple like regionals, regionals and stuff, but like I did like terrible at them, uh, really just there for fun. And, uh, but then, you know, uh, one of my locals, his name's Aaron Walker last year, got his invite and I was like, just so, you know, inspired by watching him do it that I was like, you know what? I've beaten him, you know, a couple times here and there. Like, <laughs> I, I, if, he, if he can get an invite, so can I, you know, I mean, there were other reasons I wanted to do it, but that was you know, kind of a, a, a something that sparked, you know, the my desire to get into competitive. Yeah, um, for sure. Seeing so, somebody near you do it, making you think, well, maybe that could be me. Maybe I can be the next one. Yeah, yeah. So then this year, I just, before I, the season got started, I talked to pretty much everyone I know who has gotten an invite before just to get some pointers and different advice on what I should do to not make, you know, rookie mistakes. And so then I applied all of that and have been grinding for like seven months. Um, and it's all, you know, come together, come to fruition. I got my invite and I got my best uh, career placement, 10th place at Collinsville uh, Regionals playing God Blounds of all decks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So God Blounds, ADP Blounds, um, definitely one of the lesser known archetypes and expanded. Even after it placed in Dallas, there were still people that didn't really know about it. Um, so what got you on to this deck for expanded? Well, I actually encountered the deck for the first time when I played in the Dallas cup on day two, I, you mm -hmm. know, I, I bombed out of the, the main event on day one playing Picaram. Okay. Um, and, uh, I was playing Toad Tina and ended up beating it. Um, I think only because the, the deck isn't built to be like, it doesn't have an answer to like item lock because I'm like punching it for weakness with Toad and it can't play B strings and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think uh, I was more of like a uh, an unexpected deck for it. For but sure. But I saw the potential there in how it has the ability to just do two attachments and flood the board with energy and really set up checkmate scenarios. Um, again, again, it didn't work against me, but I saw <laughs> the power there. Um, and I looked at the the list afterwards and it kind of just stayed in my mind. And so then when, when preparing for um, Collinsville, I was testing with a couple people 
Um, one person, uh, Kenny Britton and uh, Oscar Morales. I don't know if you know them at all. I'm sure some people at home do. Yeah. Um, but they were throwing around a couple decks, and one of them was ADP Blounds. And uh, earlier in the season, I got super into Blounds and Standard and was super comfortable with that deck and really liked it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, hey, we're just adding ADP and making it way, way faster. Yeah. Sounds good. And so of all the decks I tested, that was sort of my favorite one. And even just going on the ladder and trying a few games, I was, like, destroying the competition, won tons of games. I was like, what is it about this deck that is just so good? And I think it's, it's yeah, it's just if you do get those, you know, first two attachments and start flooding energy on the board, um, it you're, it's, like, it's it's really, really hard, especially mm -hmm. if, if they don't play Ranger, for them to recover. It just yeah. becomes an inevitable, again, like, checkmate scenario within just a couple turns. Yeah, yeah, you really outspeed your opponent, it seems. Um, it's not a deck I've dabbled much with or I I didn't come across it in Dallas at all, um, myself, but it definitely looks like it's very speedy, kind of like ADP Zacian is in standard for the standard format, but uh this kind of floods energy onto the board in a different way with the B strings. Um, and, uh, like you mentioned, Ranger can be a threat and I definitely think Ranger was much more prevalent in Dallas than it was this past weekend in Collinsville. I think people had other worries on their mind than Ranger this past weekend. So it seems like a good idea and a good time to bring out the ADP this past weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, a fair amount of decks did run Ranger, but the funny thing about Ranger is it doesn't do anything, right? And so it's hard for mm -hmm. them to, ta to to find a free turn to play it. So it, I uh, saw one guy, you know, discard it with a battle compressor, and I and I had a just altered creation the previous turn. I thought, oh, here we go, he's gonna play it. But he couldn't afford to waste a turn playing Ranger. He needed to play a draw supporter, I right? See. So then I took the the extra prizes that turn with my attack, and I think eventually he did play it, but it was too late, you know. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, Ranger needs to be uh, it, it's it's it needs to be especially timed and played at the right time. Otherwise, it's essentially like a dead card in their deck. And in the deck, yeah. uh, you know, Godblounds puts on so much pressure so early that it's hard for them to find that Ranger turn. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I feel like uh, I was talking to someone about this the other day. Um, that Ranger, I feel like, was good in past formats when it was uh necessary for certain to counter certain things um if zorark gx decks were popular um anything with like a turbo draw engine um maybe something with chinchino nowadays uh because you can play ranger and also draw cards where if you toss it into a random deck like uh let's say turbo dark um if you play ranger that's probably all you're doing for that turn maybe you're shaman set up for a couple cards as well but you're not also you're not drawing an absurd amount of cards in addition to your ranger mm -hmm, um, so mm -hmm. it definitely makes a lot of sense yeah and um, i'll say that the decks that always want to run ranger are usually single prize decks not always the case but they're the ones who especially want it mm -hmm. and um a lot of them don't run away to search supporters right they don't play lele they don't want a two prize around the board yeah so it just becomes sometimes they just can't even find it even though it is in the deck yeah like ultra and Acrosma, because they need they want to play rangers in case they get chaos wheeled out of special energy um and that's why it's usually single prizers because they use special energy they don't want to get locked out of their only kind of energy and uh yeah but like you said they don't have a lot of consistent ways to search it and they need to play draw supporters too like you <laughs> said um so let's talk about the list um one thing that definitely catches my eye is this heat tran uh <laughs> heat tran with lava burn and heat bazooka um so it it seems pretty good after it's in the deck but if it wasn't here, I wouldn't notice it was missing kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, how, how good was Heatran? It was the, like, secret MVP of the deck because most people don't know what it is. Um, I actually did not have it in the list initially. Um, I had actually shown the list to uh, 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 Benjamin Branch, who I occasionally get coaching from, and he made it, like, super consistent. And then from there, I took it and decided what text to run. Um, and I was convinced by by Kenny, Kenny Britton, that it was a great tech for stall. And it could just it's just a good Pokemon in general. It's got high HP for a single prizer. Um, and it's and it can hit um, it attacks for 150, which is 180 with altered creation, which is very important because you can kill the Dene 
and and Lele, um, or mm-hmm. even just the base 150 that can kill a Shaman, yeah. uh, which I did with one game for uh, to, to win the game, uh, which is very important. Nice. Um, the uh, side effect of losing the top five cards off your deck is terrible, so I wouldn't go like willy nilly with it. It's not your main <laughs> attacker, but yeah. in, in specific situations where you need a single prizer to offset the the prize trade, um, it's very important. But for dolls, that's the main reason, reason it's in there. Is it has that night spear effect for a 60 to the active. 30 to the bench, mm-hmm. um, or 90 if again if you've used altered creation. Right. Um, and it just eats dolls alive, right? Like dolls like doll decks like being really comfortable and they like throw down they play eight dolls and they throw down a bunch and then it yeah. just buys them all these extra turns. But if you can take out two per turn, um it, yeah, puts it cuts them in, them in a really, half. really bad spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. That's very cool actually. Um Another one is Stealthy Hood. So uh, what was the purpose of the ho- the purpose of the hood? So I uh, people tried to talk me out of running this. And mm-hmm. in a way, they were right because I didn't end up using it once the entire time. <laughs> I was like, it was my Ultra Ball discards a lot of the time. But I will say that it, it is – I still would run it even though I didn't end up using it um, over the course of the tournament because there's no other way to beat Agro mm-hmm. if they know you don't run it, right? Because the, the way right. to beat Agro is to kill the tag team and collect four prizes and then to Guzma up the item lock vile plume to get around the basic vile plume and then take your last two prizes. should be right. super easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they know you don't run the hood, then they'll skip doing the item lock one and just do the basic one, and there's no way to win. Got so it. So you do need the hood to be... Um, uh, vile, uh, yeah, aggro, and then I'm sure there's other like random scenarios where it could be good. Um, mm-hmm. Like for example, against Doll Stall, they'll try to Snorlax Stall uh, you, yeah. but you can attach the hood and an energy and retreat, you know, a Dedenne or something like that. Although True. then it's very easy for them to re-strand it and fob mm-hmm. off the hood, and there goes your one out to Snorlax. But it could help in a, you know, absolutely niche scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. Um. One other card I was going to point out was the Comfy, um, which is uh, a cool inclusion. I believe uh, it was in the Roxy Chomp deck that won Dallas Regionals. Um, each of your Pokemon that has any fairy energy attached to it can't be affected by any special conditions. Um, you're not running fairy energy, but you are running four double dragons. <laughs> um, so I imagine this would be to stop dead NGX. Yep. Yep, okay. and it's good against like Shock Lock. Um, yeah, true. And then if when Shock Lock bring down, brings down the Muck, you can put a Stealthy Hood on the Comfy, stealthy so hood. it's still <laughs> yep. a fat. And, and eventually they'll fob that off, but you want to try and win before they do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The thing about one Stealthy Hood, um, as you uh, were talking, I realized is that a lot of decks to counter a Growl will be either two Stealthy Hood or none. But with this deck, since you're taking the prizes so quickly, um, I feel like one stealthy hood can really get the job done. And also against something like shock lock, if you take prizes fast enough, since you're taking an extra prize each attack, um, one stealthy hood can get the job done, which is actually really nice. Yeah, and it's searchable with Guzmahala. Yeah, which is great. true, true, true. Um, were there any other specifics about the deck that you wanted to, about the list that you wanted to talk about before we uh, start talking about your matches? Um, I will say that, you know, you could swap out the Comfy for a, uh, Cobalion GX, which does, provides the same benefit, but mm-hmm. of course the, um, the downside is that it's a two prizer, but the upside is that it enter, it, it offers you Iron Rule GX, mm-hmm. um, in matchups where you might not to, might not need to alter creation. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just something to consider. I ultimately thought that just this having a single prizer, would be better and there was a match where i started comfy and if it had been a cobalion because it ended up getting knocked out if it had right. been a cobalion i would have lost so got it it's yeah. less, less of a liability but you, you could consider that For um, sure. and I, it, it's probably self-explanatory but the little baby uh ultra necrozma is in there just for when it gets to the end of the game, you have a really, really, really powerful uh, two prize attacker. Or if you're going up against Ultra Neck, which is one of your worst matchups, um, you just have a, a one prizer to trade with them. Got it. Got it. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, having the uh, the two basic, the two non GX, non V Pokemon are uh, is very nice. For sure. For sure. Um, so you want to talk about your uh, rounds or your matchups, however you want to do it. If you want to go round by round or just talk about the highlights, uh, let's start with day one, regardless of uh, if you want to do round by round or highlights. Sure. I'll just go through each round real quick, but I won't. Yeah. Try, I'll try not to bore everyone at home, but 
you know, round one was against Ultranek and I lost, which, you know, you put all this time and effort into the deck and I'm so like high on it. Like, I'm like, oh, this is such a good idea to play this deck. And then you lose in the first round. You're like, oh my God. Uh, you know, it was a real downer way to start the day. Um, but it is one of the worst matchups for the deck, obviously just because it's a single prize deck. And like I was saying, um, they have to find Ranger, but this dude found Ranger like early on <laughs> every game. I won the first game. It was win, loss, loss. Um, but then the next two, he just dominated and it was really rough. And, you know, they're taking off your double dragon energy mm -hmm. when they attack and everything. So it was, it was pretty ugly. It was a bad way to start the day. Um, but then from then on, I got a nice win streak. Uh, I played against a dark deck, um, which is pretty 50, 50 of a matchup. Um, but I ended up just getting what I needed early on. The deck is built to be very consistent, you know, mm -hmm. to tag call to Duke Guzmahala to get that ADP alter creation turn one or two, you know, whatever, every single game. And then you just flood the, the board with energy. So um, mm -hmm. that was able to just, you know, help me overpower him. I will say I saw something I'd never seen before. The little Clefairy from Evolutions that has Metronome, like you uh, said, yes. your opponent's attack. He used that against my ADP to one-shot it and, and accelerate dark energy onto the board. Uh, and I was just flabbergasted. And I was I've, like, never I've never seen, seen that, that in before. a dark deck. Interesting. Yeah, it was, it was a great tag. I guess he saw... He saw me coming, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like you think uh, ADP Blounds is a rogue deck, but he saw it coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, and then he also the, the deck was really interesting of how he built it to really emphasize the like the Guzzlords that take extra prizes. And um, so he used like a Mar Shadow to copy Guzzlord GX from the discard pile and took um, four prizes off of killing my Dedene. Because okay. he hit it for weakness, and mm -hmm. I was like, "What the heck?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really cool. He he like popped off game two, but uh, I ended up winning the third in the series. Um, the game three, or sorry, round three, I uh, was against Vesuvian Flareon, which is a single prize matchup that's very dicey. Um, he took the first game, and when he, he got Ranger, like immediately, mm -hmm. um, but then the next um, game, he didn't get Ranger until like super late in the game. And I was able to take all the prizes I needed. Um, and then, um, oh, I'm sorry, that was the third game. I'm like misremembering it here. No, and the it's second all good. game, something actually kind of crazy happened is that he um, got off to what I thought was a really strong start. And I felt like I was a little behind. And he just scooped the game. And I was like, why did you do that? He's like, oh, I, I discarded some stuff on accident. So I, I wouldn't be able to close the game, even though I'm ahead now. And I was like, okay are you oh, sure you wow. want to scoop and I was, he was like yeah like his cards were already you know up and so that was game two i got caught a lucky break there uh but then game three is the one where he he did get ranger but it was too late in the game got and it. i was able to to steal it out and that is the game where i brought out the heatran and killed a shaman and then he um could only kill the heatran in response and then i was able to nice um offset the prize trade and win from there so that was super cool yeah um feel free to interrupt me with any questions or anything or i'm just gonna keep barreling through oh no you're good i'll let you know if i have any uh anything to add okay uh round four was against zation and that was one of the the reasons i thought this would be a good play because i thought zation was going to be super popular i only ended up playing one um but it's just like so hard for them to to win unless mm -hmm. they get an obscenely good draw but i won just 2-0 against that felt really good like you know you want to see one of those was it um, a um adp zation or just zation just straight zation although i think from uh joey rudiger's um list it was proven that adp is probably the way to go it's essentially yeah. god blounds but with with um, zation yeah. yeah people thought that it wouldn't be too good and expanded but i think maybe that'll change for uh charlotte yeah, I had discounted the ADP version of Zation and had just tried the Turbo version because I thought it was better, mm -hmm. but it just felt like super clunky. But I was like, someone else will figure it out. And yeah, somebody <laughs> did. <laughs> Round five was an ADP Blounds Mirror, and um, no disrespect to this guy, but I think he he did not go like the uber consistent route that I did, and so he had a lot of stuff that I was unfamiliar with in the deck, and I didn't know what um, like I didn't really know what his his game plan was because there was so much extra stuff in there so i think mine just sort of out consistencyed him and i won that um pretty easily although i did get lucky because the way to win the mirror is to um 
after you altered creation, whoever takes the first prizes is going to win. Mm -hmm. So he went first, or, or sorry, he got to altered creation first by choosing to go second. Okay. And so going in, into my turn, I um, do uh, 80, or I do the GX as well. Going into his turn, he attaches and then accelerates onto uh, the bench by hit, uh, hitting my ADP. So mm -hmm. going into my turn, um, I then need to take the first prizes. And the only way to do that is to Guzma up like a Shaman or a Dedenne and kill that mm -hmm. to get ahead. And so I just happened to draw into my uh, Great Catcher mm -hmm. on uh, game one and got that first prize. And there was literally nothing he could do. Right. Um, so we went, to get, we went to game two. And then again, I lucked into my Guzma <laughs> yeah. and, was, and was able just to take the first prize. And, and that, that really just uh, um, seals the game. Um, yeah, that can definitely to, happen with mirror matches. <laughs> yeah. So if there's a w other way to like win the mirror, I don't know it. That, that's my advice, though, if you, if you do the mirror. <laughs> um, my next round was Trevnor round six. And that was my second loss of day one. And the... The ADP actually had, I'm sorry, ADP Blounds actually has a really good, you know, chance against it. I'm mm. not say it's gonna say it's super favorable, but yeah. if you just can just get two attachments on your active ADP, there's not a lot they can do to stop you, and you mm -hmm. just kind of win because if you're into, if you're, um, you know, stable on the board, then what's in your hand doesn't matter because you're not gonna have a hand mm -hmm. playing against that deck. Um, and like in all my testing, I never lost to Trevnor, which is a big reason that I decided to go with God Blounds. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of did suck that I just drew poorly and didn't get those early attachments on ADP by the time he got rid of my hand. Mm -hmm. Um, so I couldn't really do anything about it. Um, I did win one of the games, but then the third game I started Shaman and went first and, uh, he just donked me the next turn with Gengar. Okay. <laughs> so it. It, was pretty, it was pretty ugly. It was pretty demoralizing that I was like, oh, come on. I was supposed to beat this. <laughs> um, but, but it was no big deal. Uh, hold on. Let me look at my notes real quick. Yeah, it's okay. Um, um, round seven was against Dahlstall. And I was able to get out the an ADP altered creation. He didn't immediately ranger me, so I got to take a couple prizes. Eventually, he did ranger me, and I uh, brought out my Heatran mm -hmm. and accelerated onto that, and um, just brought up Heatran and started eating up the dolls, just like according to plan. It worked like a dream, um, and I don't think he expected the Heatran. And so, because you know that deck comes with like an answer to everything, yeah. But you have an answer to that, so. <laughs> It was, it, I got, you know, pretty uh, fortunate during that game. Um, and that was a really long game one that I won. And then game two, I actually started the Heatran. Like, what a dream. Oh, no. <laughs> Starting the tech. And we didn't finish that game, but it was kind of more of the same that I was just consistently putting energy onto that, weldering onto it, um, and not playing any other Pokemon. Like, you don't want to play anything but mm -hmm. the Pokemon you need because they'll all, like, Snorlax strand it. Yeah. So you don't play like Dedenne or anything. Shaman would be okay to draw some cards because you could eventually sky return it back into your hand. Yeah. But uh, generally don't want to play anything if you don't have to. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so that just worked out in my favor. I was very happy that, you know, the tech worked. Yeah, he um, trained one year around. <laughs> At least one round. Um, yeah, and then and then uh actually it was the second because it also helped against the best win so it was, i was like yeah this is heatran is like putting in work yeah um and then my uh my next match was against um trevenant break and it's essentially an auto win because mm -hmm. you just do the two attachments after you've uh you know drag double dragon a fire and then You've, you've altered creation. Um, I don't know if they play Ranger. He didn't play Ranger or Trevenant usually doesn't. Okay, so yeah. yeah. And he um, he just couldn't do anything. I felt kind yeah. of bad for him. It was just three knockouts after I did the GX and it was over. Yeah, it for sure seems... Anything with ADP seems very bad for Trevenant. <laughs> yeah, when I flipped over my ADP, he immediately said, hey, do you want an ID? And I was like... Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I see that, uh, well, you're playing it now. Um, and then I just ID'd um, the final round to, nice. um, to get into day two. Yeah, for sure. So 6-2-1 uh, into day two with, um, was it 80? 
80 or so players into day two. I can't remember exactly. It was uh, 71 players. Okay, 71 players. So how are you feeling going into day two after uh, your deck's performance day one and seeing some of the field? Um, The field was super um, diverse. Like, yeah, for sure. Round one, I don't think I played two of anything. Um, so, you know, um, there were a couple decks I didn't want to play like i don't want to play any more ultra neck i don't mm -hmm. want to play that snormax deck just mm -hmm. because it's 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 difficult to ko snormax yeah uh, a lot of the, hp the, right the plan being that you you guzma around it but even then they 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 can just get up to uh you know 300 damage very fast and kill the adp before it can accelerate which makes this things a lot worse so mm -hmm. i didn't want to see that um i felt i was prepared for most of the things and even though i had one uh my dolls match i didn't want to see that again because i felt i got a little lucky with that and it's not mm -hmm. always going to go according to plan um yeah. but really my goal going into this um uh regional was just to get top 64 so i could close out my invite because nice. i had 453 points okay so i wasn't even thinking of getting top 16 i was just like please let me not <laughs> be one of like the uh, five seven, seven players. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't get into top uh you know 64, 64 so that yeah. was like my only goal so you're uh, like i need one win <laughs> yeah I, was like, I just need to not bomb tomorrow yeah um but then i started 3-0 i played ultra neck and went 2-0 against it in the first round. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> um, then I hit, like, two um, – what was it? Hold on, let me just check my notes real quick. Yeah, it's okay. So Ultra Neck uh, was better the second time around for you then? Yes, this time um, I knew that he obviously had the advantage. So I was just going to try and – uh, exploit the deck's weaknesses because this time he wasn't this this version was the garb version so i knew uh, if, I, if he got a lead like he killed my adp um and then a two prizer then i started repeatedly ending him to that's, one yeah <laughs> that's the problem with that deck <laughs> it was great it was awesome and i had gotten one ko uh before he played ranger so i got like a bit of a head start mm -hmm. and he had no hand to come back so nice that was really good and then um the uh the, the next game he just couldn't get anything going and didn't find ranger at all and it was just over in just a couple turns cool. um so i was like dodged a bullet there yeah. uh, i played a tina chomp they have um you know uh, uh they can win the godwounds match if they know what to do mm -hmm. um but it's it kind of uh is not very intuitive i think of what they need to do to beat it and so i just ended up he won one of the games, but then um, I felt very comfortable with the other two that I won because they can like speed out like a uh, a Tina Chomp, mm -hmm. um, but it ultimately doesn't matter if they're attacking with two tag teams. Whereas I, they kill my one tag team, and then I have nothing but one and two prizers for the rest of the game. But right. they have, and and but they have two tag teams that I'm going to kill with my you know smaller guys. Mm -hmm. and so it generally works out for me. Mm -hmm. Um. Then I played a Mew 3, which I was like, oh, I'm surprised this made it so deep into day two, because mm -hmm. I guess I didn't have very high opinions of the deck. I know it can be really good, but a lot has to go right for that deck yeah, uh, yeah. to do well. Um, but I, you know, I won game one, and in game two, I had my, uh, my question answered, because he was just kind of putting damage all around the board, but not killing anything. And oh. I was like, oh, I, I guess I'm going to easily win this. And he uses the Alolan Sand Slash GX attack, and he just automatically wins takes yeah. all six prizes um it was actually a seven prizes all in one turn and i was like oh okay so game three i didn't bench uh i, I like under benched you know it's very right. conservative with what i benched and he kind of got off to like a super slow start and i just beat him uh and uh, so i was like oh that was that that was very close yeah <laughs> and then eh, hold on what was this oh and then comes round 13, like, I'm, like, 3-0 day two, feeling like I can make it to top eight. Just one more win, then I can ID into top eight. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I hit dolls, and I do not get very lucky. Everything goes his way, not my way. I mean, I get out the, uh, the Heatran, and I try to power that up and everything, but I just couldn't draw energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was afraid to play, like, Sycamore to, you know, discard a hand of, like, at that point, it was, like, 
15, like 20 cards. Yeah. I uh, didn't want to do that to get the energy because then he'd probably be able to deck me out. Um, and while I was taking the time to try and just naturally draw into the energy, he was making lots of plays to get, uh, you know, lots of Steven's resolves and then, it, you know, uh, weaving in some, uh, is it Team Walk Rocket's handiwork that you flip the coin and yeah. mill the cards? Yeah, that mm-hmm. one. Um, he was doing that, starting to mill me, and he was getting very aggressive with that because I wasn't putting on any pressure. Yeah. Um, and then every time I did a deck search, um, my cards that would help in this matchup, like Welder um, and N, were just at the bottom of my deck. <laughs> like they, just would, they just would not come to the top, and I have no way to search them out because you need to like accelerate to get ahead of their um, energy denial cards, and mm-hmm. you need to end to get them off of their, their big hand where they have all their options. And I, th- I just wasn't finding those cards. Yeah. And so I decided to scoop game one, hoping I could try and tie by winning game two. But um, game two, I started a Dedenne, and it, it was over before it began because he was okay. able to Snorlax me, and uh, it was just it was just over. It was pretty mm-hmm. ugly. He just dominated the match. It went completely his way, not my way. I was, you know, I kind of just threw my hands up like nothing you can do. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I don't feel like I was like outplayed or anything like or I made a horrible mistake. It was just like inevitable. So mm-hmm. uh, I, the, the dream of, you know, making top eight and, you know, possibly even like winning the event was dead. But I still felt pretty good because I did, you know, far better than I had hoped. My last round was Team the Chomp, which, again, I just took um, pretty decisively and uh, finished 10, 3 and 1 and got 10th place. And uh, it was, yeah, it was the best finish of my career, and I and even though I you know just missed top eight, I still was on top of the world. Yeah, no, tenth place is great, especially when you went in hoping to uh, barely scrape the bottom of the barrel, right? You were, right. You were hoping for top sixty four, and you got right. tenth place. <laughs> right, and I was like, oh, I only need like fifty points, and I got eighty. Yeah, um, and then also randomly the that day a, a league challenge I had won back in November that never got uploaded randomly just decided to appear on my account that day bumping me up to uh for um 60 points so with the 80 i got from the regional it then put me at 540 which is well above what i needed. yeah and i was like cool this so you just, just got keep... all the cp <laughs> yeah i was like this day just keeps getting better and better <laughs> awesome well um congratulations on your awesome run 10th place is amazing very good um thank you <laughs> very good um and adp blounds i think maybe it's on the map maybe you made this a a deck that people are actually going to consider it wasn't just a one trick anymore it's it's performed at two expanded regionals in a row now so um yeah yeah made day two uh as well yeah in dallas i'm um, now mm-hmm. yeah a high finish for collinsville definitely shows like what it can do um i do think now that it's a known quantity people will understand how to play against it and beat it more people might run Ranger, um, uh, although I think people are more concerned with, uh, you know, Trevnor. There's like, there's bigger threats out yeah, there. Than yeah. This. But uh, I do say if you like uh, playing an attacking deck that can do well um, in this is a current expanded meta um, and don't like to play control, like this is a great deck to play because um, I'm definitely not a control player, mm-hmm. um, especially being more new to the competitive scene. Like I see people playing those decks i feel like you need to be like a chess player and i'm like a checkers guy you know uh, yeah. <laughs> checkers guy in a chess world playing adp blount <laughs> yeah that's what i feel like yeah yeah um i i actually i've been trying to like form my opinion on this deck as we've been going through this video um and trevnor i definitely felt like it was a solid play because it had the chance to beat anything by disrupting and I feel like ADP Blounds has the chance to beat anything by just taking all six prizes so quickly. Um, it feels like you you aren't really out in any of the matchups. Like most matchups, you have like a chance. Yes, exactly. In, in like in that Ultranet game I was talking about, you I was able to just kind of like uh, muscle out a win just through the through the sheer power and pressure that the deck has, and mm-hmm. that, that's a great feeling. That going into any matchup no matter what they're playing, if you just get that altered creation and that turn two attachment, Mm -hmm. it's, 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 that is a scary prospect for any deck to face. Yeah, absolutely. And they knock out your ADP and you pop a few B strings and, uh, (laughs) we're going to game two. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, Oh, thank you. Yeah. Killing that. Uh, Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, thank you so much for being on the channel. And do you have any shout outs? 
Um, I feel like I mentioned everybody who I owe a debt of thanks. I definitely want to thank all my non-Pokemon friends for listening to me talk about wanting to qualify for Worlds, you know, for the past seven months, nonstop, <laughs> and having me to explain things like this to them. And they, it sounds like I'm speaking another language to them, I'm sure. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, shout out to all of them. <laughs> to, awesome. To John and to Ryan and, to <laughs> all those, and all my coworkers who have to listen to it. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely feels good. And I, I appreciate their support and, and everyone who helped, uh, you know, build the deck and, 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 you know, offer all the, this insight that I otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, so yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. And, uh, guys, if you're interested in following Joshua, his, uh, Twitter is Joshua Yale. Uh, I'll put that in the, uh, description as well and uh, i'll also have his deck list i'll export it from ptcgo and i'll pop that into the description below if you want to try out god blounds maybe start testing it for charlotte uh see if uh see if this is the deck for you for expanded uh, thank you so much for being on the channel again joshua thank you all for watching check out potownstore.com as usual subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this in the future and i'll see you next time here on celio's network